I'm going to start declaring integers today. So let's just say we have something like your character HP. I'm going to say you have 20 HP int HP equals 20. Just in case anybody's confused, a whole number would be something like 1 or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No fractions. An integer might include stuff like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you might have whole numbers, and integers include integers and whole numbers. So I might say something like C out your HP is HP and the line if I run the code okay there you see it by the way all this green stuff doesn't mean anything it's just there for human readability it's not part of your code so double slash human readability you're only going to be reading these two lines not this anyways I might also say HP negative negative this means you're decreasing your HP by one so if I say your HP is now HP okay we have changed our HP to 19 you can also go the other way HP plus plus see out your HP is up HP okay it's up back to 20 this is straightforward now let's dig a little deeper when you declare an integer like this you're reserving certain amount of space on your RAM I'm not going to talk about stack or heap in this video. I'll probably do that in another video. For now, let's just look at this. I built a little Unity app to express what an integer is. Let me click play. And obviously your computer doesn't have light bulbs like this, but let's just imagine that this is a small part of your RAM and every light bulb represents a single bit. You have 32 bits, which would equal four bytes. So when you say int HP, what you're saying is you're going to be using this amount of ones and zeros to express a certain integer. You should already know that your computer uses ones and zeros to represent numbers. And for an integer, you can use any sort of combination to represent a number within the scope of 32 bits. You can also use this to represent positive or negative. And basically, within an int, You can represent any integer between 2 billion something to negative 2 billion something. By declaring data types like int, you would know exactly how many ones and zeros you need. Another data type, a bull for example, something like bull is dead. This is just true or false. So you might say something like, am I dead? is dead okay zero means false if it's true it means you're dead and at this point you should know that a bull would require a lot less ones and zeros than an entire integer let's think of another data type a float for example an x position I'm just gonna come up with a random number 3.14 and you might say your x position is x position okay 3.14 now here's something that might be a little intriguing float also uses four bytes and if i wanted to express 3.14 it would look something like this okay 3.14 
So for an int, a certain combination of ones and zeros would represent 1 billion something. For a float, that would be 3.14. We're just using a different equation. You don't have to understand this for now, but this is what I'm doing for int. For float, it just gets slightly more complicated. This is what I'm doing. For now, let's just understand that you have fixed amount of ones and zeros on your RAM. And especially for a video game, managing those ones and zeros is extremely important because you're running at 60 frames per second, or in many cases these days, it's more like 120 frames per second or 240 frames per second. In most cases for your game, you're going to be using these data types as your building blocks. Int and bool are pretty straightforward. Let me talk about flow for a second. Let me go back to this example because we have something called real numbers, which is numbers that could be anything between uh, 1 and 0, for example. It goes on. You might have something like 0 0.45. You might have something like 0 0.00000001. You might have something like 0 0.9999999999. Nine, 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 nine. And you could also do negative. So a real number includes both whole numbers and ints. But remember what I said about floats? You only have 32 ones and zeros. So expressing something like 0 0.9, nine, 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 this would be a problem. At some point, you have to cut this off and round up. This is why a float is not a real number. It's an approximation of a real number. So if you're working with Unity, for example, and this happens in most game engines uh, because they use floats for character positions. Let's say you're going from position zero, position zero. Let's say you're going to position one. A lot of times you might have something like position 1.00001 or something like 0 0.999. And if you try to go back to zero, you might have something like 0.00. .00 0001, or maybe even a negative 0.0001. Unless, of course, you're talking about something like a chessboard where every single position can be fixed on the integer. Imagine something like an FPS game where you go forward for a second and you might end up at 1.0001, but your intention is 1. This weirdness happens with floats because it's not a real number, it's an approximation. In many cases, what happens is that you might do something like a delta time, which is time between each frames, delta time versus actual speed, and you might get a new position. And this delta time is a very small number, 0, 0.0 something. Every time you update your position, you're not getting the actual real number, you're getting an approximation, which makes it highly unlikely that even if you're aiming for 1, you're going to get something that is very close to a 1. But this is good enough for a video game. You're not going to see the difference between 1 and 1.0001. And again, you have limited resources on your RAM, so this is good. But for something like a science lab or finance, this might not be a good fit. The next question is, exactly how much are we approximating? Let me come up with another example for this. You might have seen this somewhere, but the scientific notation for the speed of light is something like 3 multiplied by 10 to the power of 8. I believe this is meters per second, and this would be the same as writing 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These two are essentially the same, but one of them uses significantly less amount of resources to express a number. For a float on a computer, we use the same pattern. Instead of writing the entire number like this, we use this format. The big difference is that your computer counts in twos instead of tens, so let's look at this for a second. So for a float, we have 32 ones and zeros. This will be used to signal positive or negative. This part would be the what we call exponent. The rest would be called mantissa. If I come over here, the positive sign is omitted. This would be the mantissa. This would be the exponent. Now, why am I talking about this? Actual speed of light is something more like 2.998 something multiplied by 10 to the power of 8. Let's pretend that you could only use two digits for the mantissa. You would end up with either 2.9 or 3.0. You would be getting an approximation because the actual number lies somewhere in between. But remember what I said about floats and binaries. 
you have 23 ones and zeros to express the mantissa. Let me bring out the calculator. I'm going to switch this to programmer. Click on binary. And I'm going to have 23 ones. So this binary sequence in decimals, which is what we're used to, would be 8 million something. When we're talking about the mantissa, the amount of digits you have is important because it represents how much accuracy you have. If we apply the same pattern to binary, it's just a different number system, but the exact same pattern, you would have a zero or one here. You would have eight digits of the exponent and 23 digits of the mantissa. Any value that you try to express beyond the digits of your mantissa, you're gonna to start to lose your accuracy. So for float, even in your video game, you don't want to be using anything that goes beyond the seven digits. In most cases for a game, you're going to see values like zeros or ones, tens, maybe hundreds. By the time you get to a giant float like a thousand and you start ex expressing point one, two, three, you're already losing your accuracy. And as you're updating your game, you're often multiplying or dividing so you probably don't want to go with a large float. Sometimes within the game developers, I see people for character model scale, for example, I, I've seen people use some insane numbers like 0 0.00001 or a few million even. They do this because scales for whatever 3D software that they're using is completely different from that of a typical game engine like Unity. But once you do this, you're going to start getting really funny results. So you want to stay away from floats that are too large or too small. But usually we just care about our script. So don't worry too much, even if you don't understand everything. I understand very little myself, but you should at least know that understanding even the general sense of how things work on your memory, that relates to how well you use your resources, which also relates to how smooth your game is. For your homework assignment, try to answer these questions. Why do you think C++ makes you declare data types? Why do most games use floats for character positions even though it's only an approximation? Why should you not use large or small floats? How many bytes are in kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes? I think this is called yottabyte. It's just something bigger than terabyte. How many bits in bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, yottabytes? Why do you think data is represented in binaries? It gets a lot deeper than this, but these are just simple questions to get you started. So uh, that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions. You can reach me on my Discord server. I have all the links below. And thanks for watching. See you next time.